What do you do in April 15, 2024? <laughs> Hopefully not waiting until that day to file your taxes. That's right. We are halfway through this year, and that means you should start thinking about uh, the tax deadline. Don't stress, though. A Yahoo Finance Twitter poll found almost 60% of respondents have not thought about next year's taxes at all, which is, frankly, surprisingly low to me. I would have thought it would have been higher. Our next guest says it's worth doing a mid-year check so you are more prepared when the season rolls around. Mark Stieber is a senior vice president and chief tax information officer at Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. He is with us in the studio. It's good to see you. Good to be here. So what's the number one thing mid-year that you need to be thinking about when you're casting your mind to taxes next well, year? Well, a lot of people say at the end of December, hey, give me a tax tip. I want to save on my taxes. What's the thing? And I say, well, if you'd have talked to me in now. July, I'd have given you four or five things. These are the four or five things. And I'll start off by simply saying, if you weren't happy with last year's result on tax day, if your refund wasn't like you liked, or you worst case owed a balance due, or even worse, you were expecting some money, you know, now's the time to take account on that. Now's the time to take half a year of your information, just as simple as your pay stub, multiply it by two, look at your withholding, multiply that by two, adjust for other life changes, and we'll get to that in a moment, and kind of see where you are. And odds are you're going to be kind of like last year. So if you weren't happy last year, you're probably going to be unhappy this year. On the other hand, if you're really excited and you got a great one last year, you want to double check and make sure you're on track for that this year. But just waiting and rolling the dice and saying it'll happen, it'll happen, that's not your best idea for your largest single financial transaction every year, your tax return. Sure you buy a house, mm -hmm. sure you may get married or divorced or have a child, but your tax returns here 30, 40, Inevitable. 50 years. Give it some best practice attention and you'll be happier. They do always say that. I mean, it's one of life's inevitabilities is taxes. Uh, but so you mentioned a refund. They, you know, financial experts that we talk to always say, like, you shouldn't be aiming for a refund. What's I mean, it I've had like this you're... debate with many <laughs> academics, many philosophers, many notable smart people. And I tell you now, as a 40 year veteran, a big tax refund is a good thing. It is not a bad thing. If you spend it wisely, you pay down debt, you buy some of the things, you celebrate it a little bit with your family. But it is not a bad thing. In fact, for most Americans who can't put that 40 or $50 aside, they go to Starbucks, they go to tw you know, Twitter, they TikTok, or they spend it wherever, mm -hmm. having a three or $4,000 refund put aside for you is a good thing. Sure, you don't have the use of your money, but in recent days, if you had it in the stock market, you were losing anyway. <laughs> now, granted, we're up now, but the point is, it works for a lot of Americans. And three out of four people have gotten a refund, not out of ignorance, not out of stupidity. They did not know what was coming. They like it that way. Now, back in 2020, the IRS adjusted them down. That's why we had a lot of refund disappointment, refund shock, and balance due trauma over the last two years. They've really started to pull back on that, thinking people would be better off. I'm here to tell you, many people are not better off. We had a lot of people who couldn't pay or didn't have the money or were counting on the money, and I saw the pain at the desk. Mm -hmm. Take account right now, adjust your withholding, change your W-4. It's pretty easy at most companies on your HR platform. Add another $25 or $50 to your withholding. It's a smart thing to do if it works for you. Now, on the other hand, if you're getting a big refund, $10,000, $5,000, you might be better used yeah. to that, but the worst case is not knowing and just hoping that tax guy gets it right at the desk. <laughs> and oh gosh, I owe and I don't have it, or I was counting on 4,000 and I'm not getting it. Plan now, plan for the next five months. It'll be here before you know it. Speaking of planning, you mentioned before life events, right? That can affect your taxes, getting married, having a child, buying a house. How do you, how should you be, most of the time people don't necessarily think yeah. right off the bat about taxes. Mm -hmm. Like, I just had a baby, I'm thinking about my taxes. No. <laughs> it's a deduction. <laughs> what, what do they need to be thinking Well, the, the simple fact of the matter is we talk about tax changes and mm -hmm. tax law changes and late changes. Life changes drive bigger impact on your tax return each and every year than tax law changes. First of all, they're more common, and secondly, they don't get the high profile publicity. Getting married is huge. If a man and a woman or two men or whoever gets married and you add their incomes together, it's not just one and one is two for your taxes. You generally go into a higher tax rate. You may phase out of benefits. You're generally in a much, much different position. So if you're thinking about getting married or you got married, you really need to do a bit year checkup. Had a child, there's a dozen different tax benefits that you might not even know about and that can help you out. Education benefits. You, you start a side gig. We saw this in the, uh, in the pandemic. A lot of people had to do it to make ends meet. A lot of people found out they were good at it or they liked it or they're mm -hmm. continuing to do it. But when you've got a side gig, it's a totally different animal than working for a, an employer who withholds the money. You have to pay the Fed tax, the state tax, the Social Security, the Medicare. And if you find out at the tax desk you had a pretty good year, but oh, now 20 or 30 or 40 percent go to the man, 
that's not a very favorable experience. So anybody who had a life change, big, medium, or small, got married, had children, got divorced, side gig, cryptocurrency, all of those have a big impact and generally a non-happy yeah. impact at the Sorry, tax Sorry, I day. like that cryptocurrency is a life I event. Know. I'm just laughing at that. <laughs> but, I guess for some people it is. I got to ask you, um, in, in terms of like what is the most beneficial move to make if you're trying to decrease the amount yep. you owe, like what is either the purchase you can make yep. or contribution to, like, let's say your IRA, what would you say? Is That's the, a great question. And the mm-hmm. fact of the matter is there's dozens of best practices. The one I always tell folks is if you're an employee and your company has a 401k and they have a matching, which many do, yeah. if you're not at least contributing to the 401k to the extent you get the match, you're missing that benefit. Plus you're missing the tax deductibility of your contribution, plus the tax-free growth. So 401k as an employee and a similar thing if you're self-employed, is a number one go-to. But if you've got kids or dependents and you have education costs, there's a dozen benefits on education. And if you're self-employed, it's Katie bar the door, there's so many benefits. And a lot of people just track their money. How much money? How much money? And they don't keep good track of their expenses. And at a minimum, you should have a journal and keep track of your expenses. Or an app. Or an app is even better, (laughs) but I'm not going to ask a bridge too far. Keep track of your expenses. It reduces your taxes. And don't just try to remember them when you're with your tax person. That's a poor way to go to cut your taxes. And so self-employed, 30, 40 million people now mm-hmm. after the pandemic doing it, right. not all doing it good. They too need a mid-year checkup. Mm-hmm. So when you talk about the mid-year tax checkup, what is the best way yep. to do it? The beauty is it's whatever you like. At a minimum, you should take last year's tax return, print it out, take your June 30 pay stub, mm. right in the margin. I made 20000 up through June. I double it, 40 adjusting for bonuses and other things. Mm. I took... Withholding $4,000 through June, double it, $8,000. And you can kind of do it right in the margin of your paper tax return. Even use last year's tax rate just for a rudimentary one. They're great tax engines on jacksonhewitt.com. You can put all this in and see how it is. But at a minimum, you just plug in the big parts. Then go as big as you like. I use an Excel spreadsheet. I do a June 30, multiply it by two, kind of adjust for other things. Kids have aged out, no more dependent, you know, and see where I am. And if it's where you are, then fine. If it's, oh gosh, that's not what I expect, then you might need to escalate and get a pro to go, well, no, you've misunderstood how that works. Or, oh, no, good, you do have a dependent. You do get child credit, dependent care credit, uh, you know, earned income credit, or whatever else might be adjusted for the life changes that you've had. If it's just vanilla, which I'll tell you, that's kind of like a uh, elf riding a unicorn yeah. down the rainbow these days. <laughs> Everybody's got life changes. Yeah. Figure what it looks like and avoid refund disappointment Refund shock or balance due trauma. Oh, We've seen all stuff. those Definitely the last couple balance years. Balance due trauma. Oh, yeah. it's not fun. All right, Mark Stever. Oh, we appreciate this so much. Uh, Chief Tax Information Officer at Jackson Hewitt. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.